This slide shows our best performing stocks just this week, ranging from nearly 15% to 4.9%. Our portfolio had a great week. I would have added more stocks to this slide, but I ran out of room. Professor Rex here with our third update of our stock portfolio. It was a great week for the portfolio, boosting the annual return to 19.61%. And our list of top stocks to invest in right now has changed, as it usually does, based on the company reports and the stock price fluctuations. This week I added a slide about our portfolio's top holdings and number of holdings. There are timestamp time links in the description of the video in case you want to just jump to the list of stocks we bought this week or the list of our best performers or any other section of the video. An interesting thing to be aware of going on now, publicly traded stocks, which comprise this portfolio, are required to release their balance sheet, income statement, and statement of cash flows every quarter. And we are at the time of the calendar when most companies are releasing these financial statements. So expect our list of best stocks to buy to change more frequently. Now, if you're new to my channel, I teach college accounting and I often show my students how to use the accounting concepts that I teach to pick stocks because it grabs the attention of my students and gets them engaged. To show them the accounting concepts in action, starting two years ago, each Monday I invest actual real world money, the equivalent of 50 bucks each month, into 10 dividend paying stocks. And because those original students are no longer in my class, I decided to make this video series to let them know how our portfolio is doing. In 2022, the market did not perform well, but in 2023, stocks took off. Currently, the portfolio's value is over $1,692. The portfolio's return has been 19.61% per year, which is higher than the S&P 500. Last year, the portfolio's return was 28.6%, which also beat the S&P 500. And in the preceding year, the portfolio once again beat the market. So why do we only invest in dividend-paying stocks in this portfolio? The first reason we stick with dividend paying stocks is, according to a Hartford study, over the past 50 years, dividend paying stocks vastly outperform non-dividend paying stocks. The total return for dividend paying stocks has been 9.18% per year, but for non-dividend paying stocks, average return has been negative. The study seems to be updated each year, so go check out the source link that I included at the bottom of the screen. Maybe more importantly, historically, dividend-paying stocks have less volatility than non-dividend-paying stocks. It's much easier to stick with a less volatile investing strategy. The more volatile a strategy is, the more likely you are to panic and sell at the wrong time. So why are dividend-paying stocks less volatile? Because most dividend-paying companies are making a profit, which is why they have excess cash to pay back to investors. As you can see on the screen, risk and volatility of dividend paying stocks as measured by beta and standard deviation tend to be much lower and therefore safer for dividend paying stocks. And finally, the study also showed that the best performing stocks are dividend paying stocks that increase their dividends, which is why our classroom stock portfolio only invests in dividend paying stocks that have increased their dividend recently. So why do we choose to invest $12.50 per week, which is essentially the same as $25 per paycheck. Let's talk about that on the next slide. So the main reason why we invest only $12.50 per week into the portfolio is because I wanted to show my accounting students that you don't need a lot of money to build a diversified stock portfolio. In fact, when I was only making $11,000 per year as an enlisted member of the military, I started my investing journey with only $25 per paycheck. In other words, the equivalent of $12.50 per week. And because my brokerage account, Fidelity, allows me to buy as little as $1 per stock, we can quickly and easily create a diversified stock portfolio with little money. Originally, I invested $12, excuse me, originally I invested $25 per paycheck for this portfolio, but I found the process to be so fun that I split it up and now invest $12.50 every week. And we boost the contribution once per year by the amount of inflation to replicate the fact that people's paychecks usually increase at least by the amount of inflation. And therefore, they gradually in, uh, increase their investments over their career. And by the way, I also invest in these same stocks in my retirement portfolio and my taxable brokerage account. The research we discuss in the class is the same research I use for myself. 
Another reason I started with a low investment amount was because one day I was wondering how much a young person, in this case a 17 year old, needed to invest per week to accumulate a million dollars at retirement. And it turns out it's only $11.74 per week. Of course, since most people's annual salary increases each year by the amount of inflation at the very least, I assumed that they would contribute or they would increase their contributions by about 3% a year, which is the historical rate of inflation. That means in the second year on this graph, it's assumed that the person invested an additional 35 cents each week for a total of $12.09 per week instead of $11.74. This slide shows our best performing stocks based on when they were initially purchased. A new stock showing up on our list this week is Intuit, the maker of TurboTax, QuickBooks, and Quicken. It has the lowest return on the list of 72%. Four stocks have more than doubled, and they are LAM Research, Broadcom, F&G Annuities, and Evercore, two of which were sold, as you can see in the far right column. Also remember that total return includes both the dividends the company has paid to us, as well as the increase in the stock price. Now let's turn our attention to the strategy column, specifically the category called dividend growth stocks. 90% of our investments in this portfolio are made in these stocks, which means that they are high quality stocks, with a great track record of increasing their dividend payouts to investors. Now the other 10% of investments in this portfolio so far have been invested in smaller under the radar companies that have recently started paying a dividend. These under the radar dividend paying stocks tend to be riskier because they are smaller companies, but studies have shown they historically beat the market averages by a significant amount. This slide shows our best performing stocks just this week, ranging from nearly 15% to 4.9%. Our portfolio had a great week. I would have added more stocks to this slide, but I ran out of room. Several of our companies released their quarterly balance sheet, income statement, and statement of cash flows this week as they are required to do on a quarterly basis. Last week was great for our computer chip manufacturers, and this week's biggest gainer is ASML, a company from the Netherlands that manufactures the equipment that makes computer chips. And you're probably familiar with American Express, Discover, and Comcast. Two of the stocks are energy exploration companies, those being EOG Resources, which has recently been our number one rated dividend paying stock, and Hess Corporation. Note that the six companies on the left are established high quality dividend growing companies, while the four stocks on the right, WK, Kellogg, PRDO, United Rentals, and Worthington Steel are part of our under-the-radar dividend-paying strategy. Now here are the top 14 dividend-paying stocks to buy this week, according to our system. We purchased the, the 10 stocks that are not in the yellow highlight. The stocks in yellow have already grown to be 4% or more of the portfolio, so we did not invest more in them this week because we want to build a more diversified, less risky portfolio. Remember, we are splitting $12.50 per week between 10 stocks, which means we are buying fractional shares in our Fidelity brokerage account. This table includes their industry, how undervalued they are according to our research, their risk rating, quality grade, and dividend yield. Remember, all these stocks pay a dividend and have recently increased their dividends, and our methodology used here indicates that they're likely to continue to raise dividends. Therefore, these are all dividend growth strategy stocks. It will be interesting to see if EOG Resources, Comcast, and American Express still make next week's list of stocks to purchase after they made their big moves this week. On this slide, I want to show the components of to my quality grade. Quality wise, we only invest in stocks rated B minus or better for this portfolio for 90% of our purchases. The other 10% so far have been invested in those smaller under the radar companies that have recently started paying a dividend. These under the radar dividend paying stocks tend to be riskier because they are smaller companies. But as I mentioned earlier, studies have shown that they historically beat the market averages by a significant amount. All of the stocks we bought this week qualify as high quality and are dividend growth stocks. Risk is the first quality component, which we mentioned on the previous slide. The next quality component is competitive advantage. Obviously, the more competitive advantages a company has, the better investment candidate they are. The next quality component attempts to evaluate the company's management. 
Our evaluation includes both management's use of capital and general decision making, but also our research dives deep into accounting data to look for red flags in the company's accounting processes, as well as the quality or reliability of their reported earnings. And of course, earnings are a fancy way to say profits. And finally, the last quality component is financial health. Remember, historically, the best performing stocks are those that pay a dividend and have grown their dividend recently. As you can see under the grade called Grade for Recent Dividend Growth and Current Yield, the stocks with the best combination of dividend growth and a higher yield are EOG Resources, Nextera Energy, Fidelity National, Morgan Stanley, and Evergy. Ideally, you want a higher dividend, high recent dividend growth, and the best potential for future dividend growth, but that's not the way it works. Companies that are already paying out higher dividends rarely have the greatest potential for the greatest growth in those dividends. In our list, as you can see from the last grade, dividend growth potential, the companies in the best position to increase their dividends substantially are Humana, American Express, and Apple. The companies with the best combination of recent dividend increases and potential future dividend increases are EOG Resources, Comcast, Humana, and American Express. Here's a look at the, t at the 10 stocks that make up the largest portion of our portfolio as of Sunday. Now, this is a new slide. Remember, we want to build a conservative and diversified portfolio by limiting the amount we invest into one single company. Therefore, we temporarily stop investing in a company if they make up more than 4% of our portfolio. This leads to a less risky, more diversified portfolio. It's true that our portfolio's returns would likely be higher if we always invested in our top 10 stocks, regardless of the size of the stock's portfolio allocation, but that also creates a more concentrated and more volatile portfolio, and many investors can't psychologically stick with a volatile portfolio. Volatility often causes investors to panic and sell at the worst time possible. Our portfolio holdings are now at 83. That might seem like a large number of companies to keep track of, but the spreadsheet that we have developed for tracking the companies makes it obvious when to sell a company. And once we've downloaded the company financial accounting information in the spreadsheet, it's pretty obvious which ones we need to sell, if any. And we do this download at least weekly, and it doesn't take much time. Of course, creating the spreadsheet and developing it, that did take time. We've been working on it for two years now. So that's it. Those are the companies we bought this week. We're trying other strategies too, using real stock portfolios. Besides this dividend growth strategy, we're also running the following portfolios, high yield dividend paying stocks, stocks with the best competitive advantages, also called moats. And note that all stocks are eligible for this portfolio, both dividend paying stocks and non-dividend paying stocks like Amazon. And finally, we started a technology focused portfolio invested in these themes, artificial intelligence, big data, cloud computing, cybersecurity, software as a service. And so far, NVIDIA is performing the best in that one. And just for fun, I started a dividend growth strategy portfolio that invests in every sector, matching the S&P 500 sector weightings. This one is the biggest challenge because some sectors are more likely to pay dividends than others. So in the comments, let me know if you have any other questions or if you have any questions and if you want to know anything else about the portfolios, any of them. Also, let me know what kind of investing videos you would like to see. And finally, here are the places you can reach me, YouTube, obviously, as well as Twitter, also called X now, and LinkedIn and my website, beatthestockmarket.com. Have a great week, and I hope your stocks go up.